Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A BJJ, BJJ Marriage. Marriage, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> do what? The Cookie Monster voice. <laughs> Yeah. Just listen to it. Oh, because I'm all blue? No, he's blue, isn't he? I think he's blue and fuzzy. <laughs> fuzzy. <laughs> Are Muppets fuzzy? Are you fuzzy? They're just soft. <laughs> Bless you. Whoa. Whoa. Scarlet got concerned. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> so, welcome back to another episode of a BJJ Marriage. This is episode 29, which, fun fact, this is the last episode that Nick will be 29. <laughs> So that's cool. I see what you did there. <laughs> Episode 30, I'll probably be 30. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. We did not plan it that way. Surprise. It happened to work out that way. Yeah, surprise. This <laughs> is our topic today. Yeah, our theme today is the art of surprise. Yeah. In jujitsu and life. Because, you know, jujitsu is life. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> and you can correlate it to just about anything in life. Absolutely. Which is fun. Yes. But, so I would say that our week was... Full of surprises for you today, or just not today, but throughout the week or yesterday mostly. <laughs> yes, yesterday mostly. I got excited. Yes. There was lots of surprise this weekend. It was super fun. What else uh, was there? What? What? Okay, talk. I'm good. Well, I mean, it was like all one big surprise at once, but like if you break it down, I was surprised multiple times in that one small moment. Really quick. Do you like being surprised? Yes. Because some people hate surprises. Oh, I love surprises. Yeah. I think every day of life is a surprise. Like, oh, I woke up. I'm alive again. Woohoo. What am I going to do today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do ask myself that I was every talking day. to Olive outside this morning when I was sitting with her. And Your dog? I, yeah, my oh, dog. <laughs> our dog, Olive. Okay. <laughs> and we were sitting outside and she just wanted to be pet. So we were in the sun and I was just petting her and we were holding each other and it was all nice and cuddly and then I looked at her and I was like should we go get breakfast should we start our day and then she just looked at me and then she barreled her head into me and I was like yeah we gotta go start our day (laughs) what are we gonna do today Olive (laughs) she doesn't know we're leaving for vacation tonight oh now she does Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's okay she can understand me only sometimes only dinner (laughs) potty and when I say do you she gets really excited yeah, she's coming down the stairs now. Yeah. She'll come yell at us. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but anyway. <clears throat> but yeah, yesterday was uh, a huge surprise. We went to open mat like normal because it's Saturday and that's just what you do on Saturday. <laughs> but she didn't come to open mat. She was like, oh, i got to get ready for vacation. And I was like, Brittany, we do this all the time. It's fine. <laughs> and she's like, no, i got to like make sure I get everything ready. And I was like, okay. Well, do you need help, I guess? <laughs> I, I really like open bed. <laughs> she's like, no, you're fine. And she's like, oh, your dad's taking you golfing, too. Or my dad is taking you golfing. I was like, huh? <laughs> That's not how that worked. I played it so nonchalant. You didn't even know anything was up. Yeah. So, okay. It was planned. <laughs> we were throwing, I was throwing Nick a surprise party for his 30th birthday, even though it's a couple days away still. But we are going to be gone on his actual birthday, so... I decided the Saturday before we're on vacation to throw him a big party and get all of his friends and family together. But I've been planning this for like two months and mm. he had no idea as far as I know. He's I still... felt like you might be trying to do something for my 30th birthday, but like not what you did. <laughs> and so basically what he's saying is that I needed a way to get out of the gym in order to get everything done. And I also had to go buy things for the party, like food and decorations and just whatever else like a party requires. 2,000 donuts. It does require a lot. And we share a credit card. So that was really interesting. So every time I needed to go to go somewhere to do something, I'd always make up excuses of why I'm going there because I still needed those things, but I also need other things that I wasn't going to tell him that I needed. So like, <laughs> for example, I needed stuff at the dollar store. Like I wanted table weights. So the... Table covers wouldn't fly away. I wanted some plates and silverware and things like that. And I was like, Nick, I'm going to the dollar store to get a spray bottle for the weeds. Because I remember you saying yesterday you need that. And he's probably like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it was all, it was very difficult for me to navigate because we do most of our shopping together. Like, most of the time, we 
just yeah. do all of our errands together. We wait till Sunday or Monday and we just do them as a couple. Yep. And I very rarely just like go out and do things without him unless it's grocery shopping because he hates grocery shopping. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> Every time so, we go grocery shopping, I'm under caffeinated. I'm hungry. And it's like, I can't buy all this food. Yeah. But then that goes back to sharing a credit card. So he also checks our statement for work to make sure that anything is not a, a work expense to put a, for a tax deduction. And I was like, oh, my God, well, I can't just, like, go spend 100 bucks here. He's going to be like, what did you spend 100 bucks there for? <laughs> so, like, I remember I went to the dollar store and I spent $18. Yeah, I was wondering why it was $18. Were you? Yeah, I was like, hmm, spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I never thought past it. But I said that out loud to my coworker and I was like, he's going to wonder why I spent $18. Like, I know it's only $18, but at the dollar store, that's 18 things. <laughs> and I came home with, like, two. So... <laughs> I really had to like think about what I was gonna say for that. I don't and know. Then, I thought you wanted some like crayons or something. Well, my coworker, <laughs> this I didn't even tell you this yet. So my coworker, she goes, just tell him it was for work and that we were just gonna pay you back. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Okay. So then I told my dad that I was gonna tell you that if you asked, like I wasn't gonna go out sure. of my way to say anything, but I figured if you asked, I would just say it's for work. They're gonna pay me back. And then my dad looks me dead in the eye and he goes, "You're going to lie to him." <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was like. Well, and he goes, you don't need to lie. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm throwing a surprise party. And he made me feel like such a terrible person for lying to my spouse. And I was just like, (laughs) what else am I supposed to do? (laughs) And so from that point on, I tried not to lie to you. So like the night before that we were going to his mom's for dinner, because he thought we were going to his mom's for dinner. He goes, hey, did my mom ever tell you what she was cooking tomorrow? And I was like, I think. She said chicken, which was not lying. And then I told him we were going to his mom's for dinner. We did go to your mom's for dinner. I just didn't tell you there was going to be 45 other people with you. And what else did you ask? Um, There was just a couple of like random things that I just was like, I had my dad in my head going, you're going to lie? And so I was like, fine, I won't lie to him anymore. I'll just bend the truth. (laughs) Oh, women. So, yeah, that was funny. And then my coworker just started cracking up and she goes, it's for a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But anyway, so yesterday I blindfolded him and I knew he was going to think something was up when I put a blindfold on him. Yeah. So I uh, never We were going mind. to mom's house and guess who drives everywhere all the time? This guy. And then she was like, I'm driving. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, are you now? And she's like, Yep. And you're going to wear a blindfold. (laughs) And I was like, oh, hmm. (laughs) Interesting. But I I had to bend the truth on that one, too. (laughs) I was just like, we are going to your mom's for dinner. I promise you. But I want to surprise you with something first. So that's what I did. Yep. I surprised you with something before we had dinner at your mom's house. Yes. So I still... (laughs) kind of lied but i am sorry and i hope you appreciate it now (laughs) i trust you (laughs) and then we're on the car ride and he drives for uber so he knows our streets really really well i just know streets really well and he goes everywhere he goes oh well you just turned left on 90 second i'm like stop it (laughs) (laughs) and then i did another turn and he was like oh now we're on oklahoma and i'm like no so then we just did like a bunch of circles (laughs) He's like, all right, now I don't know where we are anymore. I'm like, okay, good. But then we got home and we were talking about it. He's like, well, I know you turned into the subdivision off of like Cleveland. And I'm like, I hate you so much. But I I had to literally talk about my roles. Like I had to talk about the submissions I was going for, the people I rolled with. And I think I talked about, I don't remember what else I talked about, but I was talking about things so I couldn't feel where we were moving. (laughs) Because it was really hard to not feel when half of my senses were gone. Yeah. No, I believe that. And then also, it's like your mom's house. You know the route to get there pretty well. So yeah. I was like trying to fake them out, like acting <clears throat> like we were going to the gym or acting like we were going to a restaurant. Or I tried to tell them we were going downtown, maybe. Like Buffalo Wild Wings downtown. And <laughs> uh, there's a stop sign by his mom's house that's only like two blocks away. 
And I figured if I just like stopped and went right away, he would know we were at a stop sign. So I literally stopped at that stop sign for like 20 seconds to make it seem like it was a stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> just so I could throw him off a little bit longer. And then, uh, so funny. yeah, we pulled up. I went in the driveway and I was shaking. I don't know why I was shaking so bad, but yep. I was super nervous. Yeah. And you should have seen my anxiety yesterday, like driving around with Jada and Anaya in the car because I had a bunch of stuff in the trunk and I was yeah. afraid that things were going to fall on the cupcakes or that the potatoes were going to flip over or something. And every time anything happened, I'd be like, what was that? And Jada was in the back seat and she's like, nothing. It is <laughs> fine. And then a different one, I was like, oh my God, what was that? And Anaya was like, Brittany, it's okay. <laughs> oh. Ah! I've never seen you like that, probably. No. <laughs> They're just like, damn. They're like, this is normally me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I was like, welcome to my anxiety. I just want to make sure the cupcakes and the potatoes make it to the mom, to his mom's house nice and safe. That was all my goal was. We did it. There were, there were awesome cutouts of me, her, and the dog. Well, yeah, you choking me, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, all the weddings we go to, you choke me. Apparently. <laughs> Gotta keep that up. <laughs> but I found all of the pictures in my gallery on my phone. And then I just pretty much cropped it so it was just his face. And then I went to Walgreens and I got like wallet sized pictures, which by the way, that's when I needed to go get the medicine. Um, is when I went and got pictures. That's what when I, medicine? For your arm. <laughs> Remember when I said I'm gonna go get that? Yeah, that was when I needed to go buy pictures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And then you got, I got back and you're like, how much was the medicine? And I was like, oh, it was like $18. <laughs> I think it was 13 but the pictures were sick, so I had to make it up. <laughs> I was like, hmm, she's got an expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive spray bottle. $18 on a dollar store spray bottle. Yeah. But. Everything's $18. Anyway. It's a lie. <laughs> so uh, yeah i got wallet size cutouts of his face and so when you get wallet size then there's four to a picture so i got four of each of the pictures that i bought and i think mm. i got 48 total for 60 cupcakes and then i spent some time at work listening to a webinar and cutting them out yep gluing them onto toothpicks and then those were our cupcake toppers yeah that was super cool my favorite one was probably olive because she had her tongue out and then it looked like her tongue was just Holding her head out of the cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> like and she I was, was like, eating the cupcake. Stop eating my cupcake, yeah. dog. And my goal for that one was I was trying to bend the tongue so that it would like rest right on top. Oh. But I don't know if it worked that well. I didn't put them on, so. That yeah, was super cool. Probably my favorite part was I have a favorite donut that I get from Speedway. It's a circle donut with pink frosting and sprinkles that I would get. I've probably had more of those than anybody should ever have in their life. <laughs> as you just had two today <laughs> yeah and then they had i don't know how many but two massive boxes of there's donuts 48. there's two dozen in each box 48 of these donuts my favorite donuts yeah and they were so good and the whiskey bar was super awesome yep but my absolute favorite part was when i came out of the car and i was surprised because <laughs> i thought like maybe a few of our close friends would be there but, like, then I saw, like, so many more people, and, like, I kept seeing more and more faces, and, like, it took a second to realize <laughs> all of the faces that were looking at me, because, like, you can only process so many faces at one time, and then mm -hmm. it was, like, I saw the next row, and then I saw the next row, and I was, like, wow, <laughs> this is really, this is a thing. <laughs> well, it so, was cool, yeah. because we have... So many different aspects of our life. Like we have our fluid family and then we have our stone fire family. Yeah. And then we have our family from the restaurants that I've worked at. And then yes. we have our family that we grew up with, like friends that are family and also just our normal family. Yeah. And then we have outside activities. Like he has a music group that he's very, very close with. And we just had, we have a lot of different people in a lot of different areas of our lives. And it was really cool to bring them all together. Yeah. I actually just kept describing it to people as like a mini wedding for us. Yeah. Because I just invited everyone. I didn't really care that not everyone knew each other or it wasn't like the right click with each other. Like it was our mm -hmm. fluid family mixed with our adult family, mixed with our siblings, mixed with our music group, like everything. It was just all of our friends together. And 
I did make sure that everyone would at least know someone. Like, I was trying to make sure that... Nobody was island an island. Right. Like, I was trying to make sure that I didn't invite any couples who didn't know anyone so that they wouldn't just be sitting alone and then sure. we would feel so obligated to have to go be with them the whole time. You know what I mean? So I tried to make sure that our guest list was very focused on, like, who knew who, but also it was very cool to see all of our family together. It was super fun. Mini wedding. I was surprised. Good. <laughs> Yeah, that was super fun. So, next week I'll be 30. Mm-hmm. On Thursday. Yeah? Four days? Yeah! How's that feel? It's pretty cool, I guess. Mm-hmm. I've, I'm, uh, so far, I've not died yet. So. <laughs> yeah, four more days. <laughs> Number one goal of life, survive. But then we're going to be in New York, New York City, on your birthday. Surprise! So, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try to go to... Marcelo Garcia's gym at 7 a.m. on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Right way to start my 30th birthday. Mm-hmm. We'll They're see planned. how that goes. They're planning to get there. Hopefully we wake up on time, make it there on time. Oh, I will. Just... I probably will not be able to sleep. <laughs> I'll be like, gotta go to jiu-jitsu, gotta go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we have lots of really cool plans for New York. And then after that, we are driving down to D.C. from New York. Mm-hmm. We're going to spend four days in New York first and then four days in D.C. And then on our way home, we are stopping at Cedar Point in Ohio, which will be really fun. Spending a day trip at the amusement park. Yes. I love amusement parks. Yeah. So it's almost making... like I worked in the amusement industry for te- a decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're making our, our August very memorable, in my opinion. But both of our birthdays are in August, so we normally make August a very busy and ex- like just a very fun month for us. It's true. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in D.C. on your birthday, right? Mm-hmm. Who are we going to train with? Uh, I think we're going to actually try to hit up Master Sowers Gym. Yes, in Virginia? Yeah. Yeah. I think. That's the plan. We will see if we make it there. Surprise. I still haven't planned D.C.'s itinerary yet, only in yeah. New York. I was going to do D.C.'s itinerary in the car ride. Uh, we only have 15 hours, though. All right. I hope you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's super fun. But our topic of the day, surprises. I was surprised very much yesterday, but also during our roles, we were using the, well, my roles, because she skipped the gym yesterday. You know, I was talking about that to Jada, though, and I was like, yeah? I still train three days this week. Sure. Like, throughout everything that I had to do and all the days that I missed this week, like, I still was there. For three training sessions. And I was like, that's pretty cool to think about. Like, that's I wanna... an average person's <laughs> schedule. Sorry, I'm boring you. <laughs> it's probably the whiskey bar right. from last night. Oh, yeah, know? we had a whiskey bar. I had a couple of people pitch in and bring a bottle of whiskey because his favorite drink is whiskey or scotch. So I was trying to incorporate right. like a flight tasting at his party. And I got a couple of people to agree to bring a bottle. So a couple, a there flavors. was like 12 bottles of whiskey. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> it was supposed to be four. Like I asked in the event, three to five, and then I ended up with 12. And I was like, okay. So I'm, I'll be good for the rest of the month, I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, anyway. Yes. Yeah, so uh, element of surprise in jujitsu is super important because the best chokes that you get or the best submissions that you get are when didn't see it coming or when your opponent didn't see it coming right and it's always fun to learn when you are surprised by somebody's move because i would say as a white belt okay right as a brand new white belt every move is unpredictable so it's a surprise like when you roll with somebody that does not know jujitsu you're expecting certain reactions to the things that you're doing and they don't know anything yet so (laughs) They surprise you with everything they do, so your game is different whenever you go with like a brand new white belt, especially if they were like a wrestler or something. Mm-hmm. But I'd say around two stripe white belt to probably like mid blue belt, people's people start to do the right reactions to every move, so that way they can start to combat moves properly and not just get swept immediately or submitted immediately from straight on attacks. Right? Would you say that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. And then I'd say, you know, once you start advancing midway through your blue belt career, then you really start to 
make the game your own and add your own like flavor to the techniques that you're already good at at defending and then that's when you start surprising people with attacks on a regular basis or with like passes or sweeps or things like that because people think oh this is what i do to stop this move but that was just a setup to be surprised with another move yeah how much do you do that I'm at, like, the whole time you're talking, I'm literally just thinking about the roles that I did have this week Mm -hmm. and how I can incorporate what you're saying into my jujitsu this week. So Mm -hmm. I agree with everything you're saying. I think it's very cool. And I remember I got a compliment from Mike Coy, one of our black belts, and he just said, he was like, it's so good to roll with you and actually made him roll with me. He was not trying to roll that night and I made him roll with me. Surprise. (laughs) Surprise. And then I rolled with Josh Janice, and he also told me, he was like, you're just getting better every time I roll with you. And I was like, I appreciate that. Like, thank you. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's it's a cool compliment to hear from anyone, but it's even better to hear it from a black belt because then you know that you're improving. Yes. So it's, it's a journey for sure. And like you said, two-stripe white belt on is probably where it really starts to all connect. And I mean, if you're listening to this, you probably train, you probably know that Jiu-jitsu is just endless. There's infinite amount of moves and techniques and things that you can try and do. And by the time that you get that first stripe on your white belt or you get your blue belt or you get your black belt, like you're so different in the techniques that you've been working on and trying that there's so much more for you to learn and there's so much more for you to improve on. And yeah. it's just cool. It's a cool path to be on. Yeah, it's a super awesome journey of jujitsu. Are you what are you doing? I hope you can see this. She's digging. So we left her a blanket in front of our microphone today so that she doesn't try to sit in our laps like normal. And now she's choosing to dig because it's not a good enough bed for her, apparently. Surprise. (laughs) Aw. She's so cute. But yeah, the journey of jujitsu is super awesome. Speaking of the journey of jujitsu, we had a belt ceremony Monday at Fluid. Heck yeah. Yes, we did. Congratulations. We saw a new blue belt. New purple belt. A new purple belt. And a new brown belt, all in the same hour. Yeah. Bang. It was very cool. So, congratulations. All big members of Fluid, too. So, it's just, it's always cool to see our people get promoted and to see their journey continue. And it's also very cool to be there to celebrate with them. Mm-hmm. So, and, congratulations, yeah. Rome. We had him on a podcast. Yeah. We have had Ellie on a couple podcasts, yep. so congratulations, Ellie. Yep. And I would like to get Mike Davis on a podcast sometime. I oh, think he that would that be fantastic. Would be, that would be a hey. fantastic conversation. Hey, Chica. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Take so sad. Come Why here. are you so sad? Come here. <laughs> Let me rub your ears. No coffee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Mike Davis would be really fun, and I yes. think Sadius would be really fun conversation too just oh yeah absolutely this kind of podcast i'm sorry my dog loves her ears being rubbed so i'm rubbing her ears right now and she is like digging She's her squishing. face into me and basically moaning that's pretty much what she's doing <laughs> sorry about our dog <laughs> but we love her and we're gonna miss her for like however long we're gone i don't know how long we're leaving a few days here a few days there whatever but yeah, we love them. <clears throat> you gonna be okay? Wow. So yeah, so our new belts are awesome additions to Fluid. And I think that all those belts are super deserving. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just super fun. I always have fantastically fun roles with Mike Davis. Mm-hmm. He continues to surprise me on all the ways he can stop all of my sweeps. Yep. I mean, he's just amazing. I remember I surprised him. Last oh. time that I rolled with him, it wasn't the belt ceremony, but the time before that, because I don't see Mike very often. He's more of a 6 a.m.er, but he's been coming more now in the last couple weeks, which is very cool. And I was rolling with him, and he had me in side control, and he was putting pretty good pressure on me, and I ended up just, like, following my instincts, and I did, like, this really big sweep i forgot what he called it but like a wrestling sweep maybe or not sweep a uh, bridge is what okay I meant. 
And so I did like this really just dramatic, like throwing my hips in the air and throwing my hand over my head and just to try to get him off of me. Yep. And it actually like somewhat worked. Like he actually lost his balance and was able to, like he had to readjust. And I remember he was like, wow. <laughs> and he goes, that was a really good bridge. <laughs> And then he even, like, said to my dad right there, he was like, she just did a wrestling bridge to me. Like, that was crazy. And I just don't think he expected little old me to do <clears throat> something that powerful. Yes. So there's surprises all the time when you do jujitsu. Yes. But that's kind of what I wanted to bring up today is, like, I think the biggest and best surprises that happen in jujitsu is when you roll with someone for the mm-hmm. first time in a really long time. Like, yeah. A really long time to you can be a week. Like maybe you roll with them normally like every week and then they're on vacation and then they come back or something. Or maybe it's you. they do only go to a specific class that you're not in and then you see them sometime. But In a a couple months. Yeah. Like let's say that you rolled with a person before and then you roll with them again for the first time like a month later or three months later. Like you're probably going to be surprised at how good they've gotten and they're probably going to be surprised at how good you've gotten. Mm -hmm. And it's always a very fun roll. In my opinion, after yes. you roll with someone for the first time in a while, that you yeah. know how they roll. Yeah, I always think that's fun. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, the progression that you see in people. Some people, it's like, holy crap, and some people, it's like, yeah, you still whip my ass all the time. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> like, I have gotten better, but you have also gotten better. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. Yeah, I really like though like I was talking about with white belts, when you can start to see them picking things up and starting to use real jujitsu defense. (laughs) Because it's not necessarily surprising, but it's like, I don't know where to describe it, but you know what I'm talking about? No. (laughs) I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, so, I mean, like... Like just exciting, or...? Yeah, it's fun to watch that progress, but... It's not like I'm surprised that you're defending Americana properly, but it's like you never used to defend Americana properly. So, like, I'm surprised that it didn't, like, my no effort submission didn't work. <laughs> like, you're you know surprised I mean? that you have to now try other things. Yes. It's and not so it much that you're surprised. Yeah, it's yeah. not so much that you're surprised that they're getting better. It's, you're, it's surprising to you that you're like, oh, I got to work on that. Yes. Or I'm like, oh, I got to now actually do other things to this person (laughs) how many times have we said surprise in this podcast? yeah i was trying to uh keep a tally (laughs) (laughs) no one's playing a drinking game out of that you'd probably be dead (laughs) oh my goodness but no i mean it's always it's always a good time like i just rolled with steve Barron. he was on our podcast a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. and it was the first time that we had rolled together in a while a couple weeks and which is weird because we're in the same classes all the time, but we just always seem to miss each other. And I remember I rolled with him and there was just things that were happening that he was like, that was sneaky, Brittany. And I was like, Steve, you're really difficult to like keep here now. Like you used to be able to be held down and you can't anymore. So yes, like we're, it, he's always such a fun role for me though. Yep. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. He tried telling me the other day, like in that role, he was like, Brittany, you know that if I wasn't bigger than you, you would have that. He's like, I had to use strength to get out of that. And I'm trying not to use strength. And I was just <laughs> like, but no, I mean, it's fine. Like, I get that you're trying not to use strength. But the fact that I still couldn't keep you there and you use strength means that I have something to work on. And he was just like, no, it's just because I have 30 pounds on you. Otherwise, like, you would have had that. And I was like, hmm. mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if you were a true technician, that 30 pounds wouldn't matter. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it was, I think he was surprised that he got out of it. Sure. And I was probably also surprised that he got out of it. But like he said, he used strength and technique. And we both we just both learned from it. We yeah. were both like, oh, okay. We have things to work on from that. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd say there's a point in your jujitsu career when you start to really learn techniques. And then you've got very solid technique. And then you start to put strength behind the technique. It kind of feels like you're cheating sometimes mm-hmm. when you do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but in a real-life situation or a tournament scenario, you're going to put strength into that technique. Yeah. So it's important to know the technique and to be able to be a technical jiu-jitsu player. Yeah. But it's also important to know when you can 
put a little oomph behind things to make things happen. Yeah. It's different if you're just... You can tell when somebody's just rigid and trying to use strength all the time versus somebody that's explosive and uses it at the right moment. Right. So that's another element of surprise that you need to learn <laughs> as a in your jiu-jitsu career. I'm Progress surprised right journey. now because I'm seeing that. Blood? Maybe. He has blood. There's blood on my belt. Are you a red belt now? Well, I was like, when did I get a brown stripe? <laughs> I literally looked at that. I'm like, did my dad put a brown stripe on here? But, no, I <laughs> no, think that's, that's blood. blood. That's a weird spot to have blood. I promise it's a gentle art. Psst. Is it from my ear? My ear's been bleeding all over people. Maybe. I wonder when that happened. Like, it's obviously dried, but you were bleeding, and then Ahmed's lips started bleeding, and... And then Natalie elbowed me in the mouth. And... Yeah. <laughs> but I remember I was trying to donate plasma. And one of the questions that I had to ask in my health screening was, have you been in contact with anyone else's blood or needles? And I was like, no. <laughs> needles, definitely not. But blood, I mean, I train an MMA, or not an MMA, but I train martial arts. So, yeah, there's bound to be contact with other people's blood. But I don't think that's really going to impact my donating plasma. What did impact yep. my donating plasma was that apparently you cannot donate blood a month before you donate plasma. You have to wait 60 days. So that was annoying. But anyway. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was annoying too because I went through all the health screenings. I was there for like an hour doing all the testing and the blood pressure and the questionnaire and the physical and everything. And then they found out I donated blood four weeks earlier and they were like, oh, you can't do this. And I was like, why didn't you ask me that when I first got here? Anyway. Oh, well. Anyway. So what's another great element of surprising jujitsu? I have one in mind if there's nothing that pops up for you. What are you going to say? Stripes. Oh, yeah. For most people. Yes. I mean, every time I've gotten a stripe, it's been a surprise. Mm -hmm. There's not... I mean... You don't go in knowing you're going to get right. a stripe that day. I mean, sometimes you can roughly, like guesstimate of when you're in that like range like oh maybe in the next like month or so i i might get one we'll see right but i don't think you really ever know going in you're exactly it's stripe. always a surprise when you get a stripe at least yeah and some people it's belts I was gonna say are a surprise <laughs> yeah not really sure. in our gym unless you're jason lippert who was surprised with his brown belt which was very cool that was a while ago but it was still really fun and i'm glad that we were all there for that yeah for sure <clears throat> but yeah for most people stripes are a surprise and i think that that's always really fun like i know ashley was just telling me because hmm. so i was training with romer and we were doing something and we just said that or because romer just got his blue belt and i was talking to him about it and he was just like you know i'm just i was a four-star white belt yesterday so like it's not <laughs> it's not really that big of a difference to me and i was like no and i totally get that and then ashley who just got her first stripe on her white belt walks past as he was saying that and she goes I don't know, man. When I got this first stripe, I was, like, ready to go fight someone. Like, I felt like I was on top of the war. <laughs> yes. It made me laugh so hard. I was just like, that's, that's awesome. awesome. She is super cool. I I remember my first stripe, too, and how excited I was. I don't remember my first stripe. No? I, know, I have an entire YouTube video about my first stripe, and I don't remember it. Okay. It's, like, the first video on this channel before we had the podcast. Yeah. Right. Do you remember stories that? Stories of that. a white belt. Yep, I had yep. stories of a white belt, which is now just Britney's stories. No, just kidding. And uh, yeah, I got my first stripe when I was filming that, which for like a 13-minute video where I used to record my roles, and then I would journal down the techniques we learned, and then I'd vlog about it on a weekly basis. It would take me like hours to make like a 10-minute video, and I was like, okay, I can't do this. I was up to like three in the morning trying to edit videos like for multiple nights. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Until I, was like, I was like, I don't like you doing this. I would rather you spend time with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, that was I also can't. when his work schedule was crazy. So we saw each other for like maybe an hour a day, like maybe. So I yeah. didn't like it when he used that hour to be on this computer. Yeah. So I stopped that pretty quickly <laughs> after like two <laughs> three weeks. Three episodes. Yeah, I was like, okay, we can't. I think it was three this. episodes, but <clears throat> it was cool because there was. Footage from Fluid in the Church basement. Yeah. 
which is super cool. Good old times. Yes. But uh, I don't remember my first stripe at all. I actually don't remember most of my stripes. I don't <laughs> remember getting my first stripe, like the actual moment and what I was feeling. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I was wearing my oh. uh, my combat corner geek, and I only remember that because there's a picture of that. But I do remember my second stripe. I was extremely excited about it because I really, 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 really felt like I deserved my second stripe. <laughs> like, I remember oh. thinking, no, I remember thinking at that time, I was just like, I I know I'm a good one stripe white belt. Like, I think I deserve my second stripe. I really do. And I remember after I got it, I went up to Ellie and I was like, I got my second stripe. And it was in our parking lot. And she was just like, I'm so happy for you. And it was so great. And now I'm looking back at that and I'm like, damn. Wow. <laughs> what a great <laughs> what a great time in my life right but my fourth stripe was the most entertaining one because i had sprained my pinky that day oh yeah that's and right i was looking at my pinky and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and i was like oh my god and i was holding my pinky up and i was like dad what do i do and he's like okay let me go get you some tape and he comes back and he like acts like he didn't tape my freaking finger and he tapes my belt instead and i was like okay that's great and all but i still need tape for my finger <laughs> <laughs> that's right that was awesome that was super funny yeah so that was a surprise yeah i don't remember my stripes sorry brent <laughs> <laughs> um i remember when we got our third stripe together because that was fun mm-hmm. and oh you got your fourth stripe in georgia yes that's right i do remember that with master sour getting my fourth stripe yep which was super cool i remember ted got his fourth stripe on his white belt from master sour too which yeah. is cool. Ted and Tyler. Tyler didn't he get his belt. Dave, Dave got his belt. Dave got his belt. Dave got his purple belt from Master Sour, which yeah. is cool. But yeah, I mean the element of surprise is always there. So in your rules, in your belts, and I guess whenever anything happens to like your body <laughs> is kind of a surprise too. Like whatever <laughs> injuries. Injuries, like we were just talking about blood. So I was thinking about blood. Like when you start bleeding, you're just like, oh. I'm bleeding now. I should go fix that. And then you look at the person's white gi that you just got all your blood on. And you're you're like, like, ah. I feel bad for bleeding on you. The funniest thing is that no one even cares. Yeah, everyone's like, oh. You get blood on a white gi and they're just like, eh. I think the the first time it's like a shock or a surprise. (laughs) Take another shot. (laughs) Everybody needs a whiskey bar for this episode. Right. But yeah, I think the first time that you see people like bleeding, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. People can bleed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But then after that, you're like, ah, it happens. This happens like all the time. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, dang it, I was just going to say something else. Oh, I was going to talk about how sneaky you have to be to surprise people in Mm. jujitsu. Like when you're really trying to set up a move that you know is there. But you know that if you go directly for that move, they will also recognize it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think that's when jujitsu starts to become the most fun is when you can really start to set people up and throw them off. And then all of a sudden just set something. Like yesterday I was going for a paper cutter choke on someone and I had them, I kept rolling them away from me and I, I was setting up my collar grip and I had planned to put the last piece of the submission together and... I forced them one way so that they could go, so that they wanted to go the other way, which is the way I actually wanted them to go to finish the joke. And then it all happened like very well. And I felt like I knew jujitsu or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were even like, oh, this is bad. And then they were like, oh, that was sneaky. I think that's one of the coolest things about takedowns, though, is yeah. that takedowns are almost always kind of a surprise of what your opponent is going to do like on Mm -hmm. the ground you can feel their movements you can see where they're trying to go and feel where they're trying to move but in a takedown i mean they can do pretty much whatever they want yeah and once they're locked up i mean you can start going with the sense of feeling again like if they have a tie up or if they go for a russian arm bar or i mean russian tie and try to take the back or if they try Mm -hmm. to go for a hip toss like you can feel that kind of stuff but until they're actually there you don't know what they're gonna do I don't know if they're going to try to go for a leg or if they're going to try to go for an arm or if they're going to go for a flying triangle. (laughs) Like, you have no idea. So I think takedowns are always a surprise. And the thing for me with takedowns is that I 
I'm always surprised with myself of how I react in a takedown because as much mm. as I go in there when I'm doing stand up and have a plan of what I want to do, but, yeah. anyone who's ever done stand up knows that you can only do a takedown if you set it up properly. But if your opponent is going to do something to completely F up what you're trying to work on, you have to immediately like switch your brain, switch your thoughts and try to figure out something else to do before you get pulled guard on. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many different things that can happen. And there's so many different setups on the feet that mm-hmm. people just aren't used to because 90%, 95%, 98% of all our roles start already sitting or on our knees. Mm-hmm. So you never get the habitual reinforcement of any stand-up moves or defenses. Right. Unless you're a wrestler, then that's all you do. And that's why wrestlers are so tough, because they're used to that already. Right. And they're used to putting people on their back and keeping them there. Trying to. Right. They're used to people never get going onto their back. Right. So I was rolling with this brand new wrestler, and like he was trying to pass my guard, and it was you know funny and all that. It's just like, Leaning forward, and I was just holding him down, just letting him know what jujitsu was like. It was his first role ever, I believe. And after the role, I was like, "It's weird to have people on their back and using all their limbs against you, isn't it?" <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> it was very different." He was surprised. Surprise! Mm-hmm. Ding ding ding! Maybe a gong or something. <laughs> yeah, but I thought that was super fun. Yeah, but I think takedowns are always part of that element of surprise at least for me i don't know if it's for everyone maybe it's just because i'm a white belt and i'm still learning all my takedowns and everything like maybe by the time you're black belt it does get a little bit more easy to tell what to do and what's right. what's happening and it's not such a surprise of what they're trying to do but like for me right. i i know that i have two takedowns that i like to do and if i can't do either one of them my brain starts scrambling and if <laughs> i try to go for one of them and they mess it up for me like they move or defend it well then I'm immediately like, surprise, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, now what? Okay, now I'm here. All right, done. <laughs> yeah. That didn't work. I think that, I think, isn't that what everyone says in jujitsu all the time? Well, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's probably like the most common expression. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> that didn't work. Yeah. And I was just going to say that too. I think it's super cool. Whenever you're in a class or you are at a seminar and someone's teaching a technique that you've seen like multiple times, but they add on one little detail or show one different placement of their leg or their hand or a different grip or a different rotation of their arm that just opens up a whole new world of possibilities in that move or sometimes across your jujitsu that you're surprised about (laughs) in their teaching. And then you're just that light bulb moment. Yeah. It's just super cool in jujitsu. So I was just talking to Jason Lippert actually about when he got his black belt for Master Sauer. And we were talking about how Master Sauer was able to kind of position every single move that he was doing just a tiny bit differently than what he's used to. And it just made the move that much better. And he was saying, I told him, I was like, well, I wasn't actually there for yours, but I was there for Mike and Rob's. And I saw him do that to everyone. And Mike Coy had told me, he was like, I've never felt so dumb in my entire life. And mind you, when you're getting your black belt, like you train and you drill these things for months because you, you want to pass your test. You want to yeah. know all the self-defense moves. So when you drill something like that over and over and then Master Sauer comes in and it's like, well, why don't you just move your pinky? And then <laughs> you're just like, oh, <laughs> okay yeah. and i know that every time my dad goes to a master sour seminar he always is just like like how did he that doesn't all these years 20 years doing it wrong <laughs> so yes. i think there's always that i still i still use things every day that i learned from master sour and i've only been to three of his seminars mm-hmm. but i think that's how seminars are supposed to be i think they're supposed to surprise you and they're supposed to open up a new world for you Mm-hmm. on a specific move like how much did you learn from josh's guillotine seminar a ton yeah were you surprised at anything like oh yeah i probably yes. should do it that way absolutely mm-hmm. there was one point where it was a super small movement and karen if you're listening you might remember this but we were doing the guillotine 
And one of Josh's major principles is compress everything. When you're doing a guillotine, you don't want to extend and pull back. And normally when you're doing a guillotine, like you got a proud chest and your head is up, right? And you get in the guillotine, you sink it in, and you're trying to compress everything. But like, look at my head and neck. It's strong and up, and I'm like proud. But then once I literally, for compression's sake, and it sounds simple when I'm doing it now, pick my head and look directly at their shoulder blades. Now look at the extra compression here. But like trying to finish it like this versus like literally just looking at them and then trying to compress it like this brought like a huge amount of compression into the choke, which made it finish super, super fast. And I was like, Karen, try to stare at the middle of my back and my shoulder blades <laughs> when you're trying to choke and see if it helps you because that just helped me out a bunch. And then she was like, okay. And then she was like, tap. <laughs> and I was like, yep. Yeah. That definitely helped. Wow. <laughs> we were surprised by that. Yeah, but just little things <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so yeah. vast. And it's so, so, so fun. Because that never ends, mm -hmm. supposedly. Right. <laughs> I mean, your dad talks about when he went to Master Sauer seminar in Brazil, the camp. Because Master Sauer has a farm in Brazil that he brings people to a couple times a year. Which I hope to make it out soon, and that's also why I'm learning Portuguese. <laughs> um but Master Sauer will see people doing things in the roles. And Brent, the black belt at our gym, our father or whatever, <laughs> he's really good at being in turtle. And um, when somebody has a front headlock on you, he's really good at dumping you forward while you have a front headlock on the turtle position. Mm -hmm. And Master Sauer saw him doing this at a couple different points while just like open mat time. And then it was like, you're very good at that. Can you please teach that to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> and then Brent was like, "Me, <laughs> just me? a little old black belt from me Wisconsin." They teach me, teach this, okay? And like, there's four or five stri striped black belts from Brazil. From Brazil, that Brent is now teaching his um, front headlock fireman dump series to. And the reason I brought that up is because Master Sauer, I think gets to see so much high-level jiu-jitsu, and then just takes bits and pieces from everybody's best parts of their games and then internalizes it. Also from what he learned straight from Helio, straight from Hickson, and everybody that he used to train with when he was 15 years old. Um, but he's able to put that all together into a game. And then the other skill that comes with being an amazing coach or professor is actually teaching that to people instead of just being able to know it and do it yourself so it's very surprising how great he is at that because yeah. <laughs> it's not normal i it's an experience that you re i really have not seen anywhere else and i would say master sour is probably also surprised when he sees things like that mm -hmm. like not even just with my dad but with anyone who comes right. to his camp and he notices that they do things that he doesn't teach that way where he knows what they're doing, he can tell what they're doing, but mm -hmm. he may have not ever showed it before. So he's like, you need to go show that because you're really good. Yeah. And I think that's probably really fun for him too. Right. Yeah, it's always fun to learn stuff mm -hmm. and to see stuff that makes you like think in jujitsu or even in life. Right. Right. For sure. We I haven't even talked about all the surprises that happen in life. <laughs> Only jujitsu for right now. <laughs> And yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was super fun. I do really appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. But I think that jujitsu helps us with the surprises of life in many different ways. Because on the mats, we're surprised constantly by techniques. But we stay calm most of the time. <laughs> we stay calm and just like figure out, okay, now what do I do with this obstacle in my way? And once you start applying that to life, when surprises pop up in your life, things that you didn't expect, and I talk about expectations often, but expectations set you up to be surprised yeah. when things don't meet your expectations. And if you're able to meet those surprises in your life and just say, well, this is the way it is now, what would I like to do about this? Right. You're going to be much better off instead of. Like, every time she tries to triangle me and I'm surprised with it, and I'm just like, oh, 
Damn it, I'm in a triangle again. Guess I gotta tap. <laughs> Our lives would be much different. <laughs> you would just triangle me all the time. Right? But same thing in life. Like, if there is an obstacle that comes up, like, uh, there's an injury and a medical bill. Ah, oh, well, I guess this is just the worst thing. No, you're gonna figure out a way to make it happen and move forward because otherwise you give up on life and that's no way to live. Mm -hmm. I think. I agree. I think life is full of surprises, good and bad, and you just kind of have to roll with the punches and keep moving along with it. Just like jujitsu, if you get thrown in a nasty submission, you got to just keep either working your way through it or tap. But in life, you're not going to just tap out. You're going to keep working through it. You're going right. to keep going. Yes. And for the most part, in the country we live in, like the options that we have aren't like try or die. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there's so many things we can try before we're going to get to the moment of, okay, if I don't do this, I'm probably going to die. <laughs> Which is a perspective I don't think that most people have. But, like, this is the reality that some other people live in, is if they don't comply, they're going to die. Isn't that scary? Isn't that just, like, such a terrible thing to know that people are living life like that? It is terrible. And there's a lot more of that than what we realize. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot more of it happening than what's talked about. Right. And there's a lot going on that is, like you said, is not being talked about. It's not making the news. And, I mean, everyone knows that North Korea is just crazy. And then we all know that Afghanistan is kind of going into turmoil right now. Like, it's just, it's a scary world that things like that can happen. And I think that... We should be grateful that we live in a country, or maybe you're not from America, maybe you're from New Zealand, or wherever you're listening from, but I think you should just be grateful for where you are. Yeah, Australia is getting pretty rough right now, too. Yeah. With the lockdown. Right. So, I mean, New Zealand is, too. Mm -hmm. New Zealand's been really strict on their lockdown. I think they're just going to do another two months. Yeah. And Canada just opened up to U.S., but then I think France only opened up to, or U.K. only opened up to France. And it, not COVID related. I'm just that's more, not the point. No, <laughs> the point is, most of us where we are in lives have the option to continue trying new things and finding new solutions, like you would in jujitsu. Like when you're stuck in an arm lock, there's many different ways you can move. Sometimes you learn, I shouldn't move this way; that makes the arm lock worse, and then you don't do that again. <laughs> but in our lives. There's so many people that have been through the same experiences, so many resources we could call upon to learn from their experiences and then not do those things. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, find a way, a path out for us to continue living a more grateful, appreciative life. I think that's something that everyone should try to take away from jujitsu too, is to learn how to act calm in stressful situations. If there's anything that I have taken away, I would say this is kind of crazy because Josh doesn't even train at our gym, but I would say a lot of my jujitsu comes from Josh Janice, which is freaking weird. But like, I remember when <laughs> I was either a zero or no stripe, zero or one stripe white belt. I don't remember where I was at. I was pretty new. And he came and he taught like this random like crotch light seminar about, <laughs> and all he kept saying was posture. Work on your posture. Be postured up. Always have your back straight. Like, never yeah. be crouched down. If you took a shot every time he said posture, you'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, honestly, I, ever since that day, like, my posture has been better. Yes. I just work on it all the time. And I Me now too. yell at the kids, posture. Like, work on your posture. So, all the time. thanks, Josh. But then also, he, there's one other thing that he just said that made me think of something. But... The one that I was thinking about, too, throughout the podcast is that being calm in a stressful situation, I remember I was a two-stripe white belt, and I was rolling with him, and he had me stuck in a triangle, and I just, like, relaxed all of my muscles so that I wasn't tensed up and choking myself, mm -hmm. and I slowly just tried to work my way out of it, and I can't remember if he let me work it out or if I tapped. I don't... I'm sh he probably let me work it out because that just seems like Josh, mm -hmm. but then I remember at the end of the class... Rob had asked everyone, he's like, I want all of you to, like, give each other one piece of advice or something that you thought was impressing you or surprised you today. So we yeah. would always do that at the end of Tuesdays. And I always really ding, appreciated ding, ding. that. And 
Josh had called me out. Like, out of everyone in the class, he called me out. And he was just like, I had Brittany locked in a submission today, and she was very calm. And it was very cool to see that progression. Like, she didn't spaz her way out of it like a white belt does. And she was able to, like, stop, think, and relax and was able to finally get herself out. And I was like, aw. <laughs> and I felt, like, so noticed, I guess, at that moment. And, like, things that I've been working on had actually Validated. been working. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And ever since that day, I have learned to just be calm in stressful situations. Wow. And it's because of Josh. So, thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. He just Changed finished his filming. His life and mine. <laughs> yeah, Josh just finished filming his Be Your Dick Next video. So, we'll probably shout that out whenever it's out. Mm-hmm. Took a picture with John Donaher. It's crazy. <laughs> Who's that guy? I don't know. Uh, some bald headed dude in a rash guard. <laughs> he took a picture with. I don't yeah. know what's cool about that, but no, yeah, that's super cool. That was probably a big surprise for him. Mm-hmm. Huge honor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. But yeah, so. All right. Yeah, with surprises, I mean, jujitsu is full of surprises, and there's so many surprises. And I think one thing I did want to talk about also was the surprising amount of things you learn in jiu-jitsu that really do flow into the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't go to jiu-jitsu saying, I'm going to become better at dealing with stressful situations. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to jiu-jitsu. <laughs> maybe if you listen to this podcast and you try jiu-jitsu, maybe if you listen to, like, Jocko, he's gonna, you're going to do that. But, like, even then, as a white belt, nobody goes to jiu-jitsu and is like, I'm going to go to jiu-jitsu to improve every aspect of my life. It's not an expectation that you have. But but it does. But it happens. It's so surprising. <laughs> yeah. You build better relationships. Indeed. You deal with stress better. You learn how to figure your way out of bad places. You learn how to think under pressure. So many things that you learn in jiu-jitsu that just like I said, flow into the rest of your life, and it's really wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's great. You should try it out. <laughs> if um, you made it this far and you have not tried out jujitsu, why the fuck are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right, guys. Well, uh, yes. Thanks for tuning in on episode twenty nine, Nick's last twenty ninth year in this world. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it to thirty. We'll find out. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> But next week, we should be coming to you from New York or D.C., which is pretty cool. Yeah. We'll be doing a podcast probably from our Airbnb with my dad. I so believe so, yeah. That'll be fun. And it's been a while since we've had him on the podcast, especially since we've upgraded our sound just a little bit. So hopefully we can hear things better, have a really fun conversation. Maybe we'll have trained at Marcelo Garcia's gym by that time and mm-hmm. can let you know how that goes. But yeah, we have a lot of exciting things still coming up and lots of surprises to be made and had and, I don't know, just loving life. Yes. Enjoying our August, enjoying our summer, and enjoying each other's company. And enjoying you as listeners. We really appreciate you guys. Yeah, for so, sure. So, like and share the video if you had a good time. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. And okay. we'll see you next week.